Hello, I'm Julie Fayfan Balzer, your host on Make It Artsy, and today we'll need hard hats in this artwork zone. To get started, I'll be working with metal to make this really cute little canvas that you can see there. And you know, this is a double embossed canvas. There's kind of real metal embossing and then what I call my fake embossing. So to get the fake embossing started, you know, I, I love to use my electronic cutter to cut all kinds of things. And when you cut a beautiful lacy pattern, one of the things is, of course, you end up with your unbelievable, beautiful cut, right? That's gorgeous. But the thing is you end up with a mat full of stuff that I hate to waste. That's one of my least favorite things, but I figured out a way to not waste it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna start with a plain wooden canvas and then I'm just gonna take some of these ugly leftovers and using a little bit of the, you know, the glue of your choice and I just squirt it directly on there because you know, rules were meant to be broken. I'm just gonna go ahead and spread it out on there and then just glue it right down like so. So a little glue under, a little glue on top. Now, how am I applying it on here? The answer is completely randomly. I'm just having fun adding my little pieces of paper wherever they can go. And you can actually make a lot of canvases this way, just going ahead and throwing all those leftovers down. But those aren't the only leftovers that I wanna use. So I also am gonna throw some extra glue down because what I wanna do is I wanna take all those leftover little bits of you know string from your sewing machine, tiny little pieces of fabric that I've cut away, and I'm going to incredibly artistically, otherwise known as completely randomly, dump that all over my canvas, just putting glue over and under. It should look like a big hot mess, but the hot mess isn't over yet because we're gonna add even more. So then I'm gonna take a little bottle that has gel medium and I'm gonna go ahead and just create droplets of gel medium in like little almost domino kind of things. So this would be six dots and then over here, I'll do some more dots. And then I wanna add even more texture. So I'm gonna take a gel medium that has little glass beads in it. And I'm also going to use the same brush, not cleaned, not anything, just to apply that all over the surface. And once all of that is dry, I'm going to have something that looks like this. You can see just random cuts, little dots, threads, everything else. So the next step is to go ahead and apply a metallic paint. I like gold because I don't like it, but you could use copper, you could use whatever you wanted, but this is just gonna unify everything. And you can see that I just put the paint right out of the bottle onto the canvas. And I would just keep adding more and more gold until everything, including the sides, were covered. So once all of that is covered, it's gonna dry and you'll have something that looks like this. Ooh, shiny. So now is the point where we're going to antique it. So to antique it, this is my formula and it's very complicated, which is I'm just gonna take a little bit of black and a lot of water. So a super, super, super wet brush and I'm just gonna brush over there. And you can see what happens is that the paint gets really sort of inky and it sinks down into all of those little crevices and other areas. And you wanna make sure to go around the edge. If you wanna add more paint, you can. But once all of that dries, it's gonna have this beautiful faux finish, which just looks so antique. And now you can see my faux embossing where it looks like I've done all this work. Because what is embossing really? It's about raising, right? Something that's a raised image that's touchable and that's what this is. But now we need to make the metal part of this. So here is how we start. You'll be surprised, it's with a piece of metal. So I just have a piece of, it's like a sort of a copper colored aluminum sheet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that onto this soft mat. So this mat is specifically for embossing because to emboss, you need something soft to push against. And I'm just gonna adhere that down. And then I'm gonna load it into my electronic cutter. And I have an embossing design saved to a USB thumb drive. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that design. Now, remember I said embossing is when something's raised. So debossing is when something is pushed in. And this design right now is going to be debossed. So what I wanna do is I wanna flip 
the word home so that it will be embossed or raised. If that didn't make sense to you, don't worry. As soon as it comes out, it'll make a lot uh, more sense. So then I can just adjust everything so it's placed where I want and I like it. And I'm gonna say, okay, I want to emboss this, please. And then I'm simply gonna use my embossing tool. And an embossing tool, if you've never seen it, is just a little ball on the end of a metal stick, essentially. And all embossing tools look like that, whether you're embossing by hand or in a machine. And then I'm simply gonna place it into the holder and I'll replace the blade with the embossing tool. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and press start. So while that's going, I have one here which I've already embossed and I want to explain to you the difference between embossed and debossed. So this is embossed, meaning it's raised. The other side is debossed, meaning it's pushed in, okay? So there's not a right or a wrong, it's just I wanted the look of the embossing or the raised and that's why I had to flip the text around. Now we're gonna distress it because we distressed our canvas and I like everything to kind of match and feel like it came from the same place. So I'm gonna take a permanent black marker and a piece of paper towel. This is very low tech, very easy. And I'm gonna scribble in a section. I don't wanna do the whole thing because I don't want the marker to dry. And then I'm simply gonna rub with the paper towel and you can see how the black is staying in the crevices. And I'm gonna keep do repeating that over and over, just kind of gently, you know, sometimes you'll rub in a circle, sometimes I'll wait a little bit longer. So if I like scribble it and then go one, two, three, then more black is gonna stay behind because it's going to have had time to dry on that metal. So I'm just gonna make sure that I get every little part. And remember, when you think about things that are distressed, they tend to be more distressed on the edges. So you wanna make sure to get those edges. I always think that's really important. So sometimes I'll go over those a second time, maybe even a third time, just to get that really nice distressed look and you can see how cool that looks right now. So once this is all distressed and I'm happy with it, which I am, you can see that it just takes some of the shine right off. You could add some decorative brads, you could do anything you wanted, but I'm just gonna adhere it. So the easiest way to adhere it, I think, is just with the same gel medium that you used at the beginning. And I would just take it and spread it on, and then I'm gonna use one of my favorite tools on earth. I was born with it. I'm just gonna use my finger, spread it on nice and thick so that it's on there. And then I'm gonna take this, push it down into there just to make sure it's well adhered, especially since this is going on a wall. I wanna make sure that it's gonna stay on there. And now you can see if we take this one out of the machine, you can see that it is debossed currently. And if we flip it over to the other side, there you go, it's embossed. So all I would do is remove the plastic from this just by grabbing the blue tabs and then I could cut it down, distress it, and maybe even create a journal cover like you can see right over there, and I hope you'll give this double embossing technique a try.